Hey, it's Michael here from Unmute Presents, the podcast for all things technology. And I'm a huge fan. I love your live calls, your in-depth episodes, and your quick tips on Sundays. Thanks, that means a lot. Do you want to tell our listeners how they can join us? Of course. Just go to acb.community and find out how to join. Or you can subscribe to Unmute Presence on your favorite podcast app. It's that easy. Awesome. Unmute Presents, the podcast for tech lovers like you and me. Hey, all Marty here, and we're back with another Digital Bytes. And as always, I have Chris with me. Say hello, Chris. Hey there. How are you doing? Doing good. Thanks. So, Chris, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, I'm excited about what I'm going to be talking about. And I am thrilled to be introducing an app that I just love. And it is a recipe management app. And it's just fantastic. So I'm really excited to present Paprika. Awesome. That's going to be super fun. And I'm going to be talking about a quick tip, which is how to easily add events to the calendar from the home screen using voiceover on an iPhone. Also, Michael is going to be talking about the new Shox earbuds. So that'll be great as well. Yeah, that's cool. Here's a Digital Bytes app review of Paprika with Chris. This is a demo of one of my very favorite apps. I love to cook And the issue with getting new recipes is often you go to a website and there's a bunch of sign up gibberish. There are inaccessible ads and it's just really a a bad experience. And I got really tired of that, which then I didn't go to those websites anymore. And then I discovered this cool app called Paprika 3 Recipe Manager. And it is just fantastic. Because one of its best features is you share the recipe from the website to the Paprika app, and then it strips out all the kinds of things in the recipe, like the name, the cooking time, the rating, the description, the ingredients, the directions, everything. And it puts them in all the right places in the app. And then you can save your recipes. So I thought I would give you a short demo of how this app works. And for $5, oh boy, it's a great investment. So here I am on the Paprika 3, I guess there was a one and two, recipe manager app. And there is... Search. Search field. A search field. 10 minute no bake cheesecake. Oh boy, that's my first recipe. That is a really good one, by the way. 10 minute no bake cheesecake. Main menu button. Aha, main menu. Okay, so at the top left corner, there's a main menu. Let's see what's in here. Main menu, heading. Okay, there's several things aside from the recipe saving capabilities. Browser. A browser. So you can open the browser and you can go to some popular cooking websites like All Recipes or Cooks.com. Groceries. Grocery list. You can uh, create a grocery list. And the really cool thing is that when you add items to your list, it will put them in the proper aisles, so to speak. So you can have your grocery list neatly organized and then you can click the little or double tap the little purchased button when you're in the store so that you know you bought that item. Pantry. There's a pantry. I haven't used the pantry that much, but I think what you do is you add items that are in your pantry so that you can know quickly what you've got to work with. Meals. Meals. You can create um, meals and save them in terms of what you're going to eat in the the following week, your various lunches and and dinners and such. Menus. There's the menus. This is a menu for what you're going to have each day. Settings. And there are the settings and there are some cool settings that have to do with um, adjusting the font if you need to. And I think there's some settings to do with syncing and that sort of thing. Sync now button. And there's the sync now button. This, if you have it installed on multiple devices, will sync your recipes across those different devices. This is available for the Mac, by the way, uh, but I have not really used it on that platform. You can also uh, use it with Android. And so this is a great app for a cross-platform option. And so now what we'll do is we will see how this thing works when I go to a website that's really obnoxious. So... App switcher. Paprika, oh, active. App switcher. Safari, active. There's Safari. And we're going Safari, there. Safari, web dialogue. Always free. Always free. 
Ah, lovely. Always free. You know there's a great ad there. Recipes. Recipes. Okay, recipes. Your email address. Tech. Yep. Sign up. Button. Sign up. All those obnoxious things. And then really, it says there's only two pages. Page two of two. On this website, which you clearly know there are not two pages and somehow there's an ad banner that you need to close. And so the really beautiful thing is that I can save this recipe Toolbar, share button. with the share button. So I'm going to go to the share button on the bottom of the screen. Most requested chicken. Most okay. requested chicken. So this is the most requested chicken recipe, as you hear. Most requested chicken. Most requested chicken. Okay. Close button. Now let's just get down to these options. Airdrop but messages but mail button. Paprika button. There's my paprika button. I'm gonna double tap. Downloading cancel button. Okay, so it's downloading the recipe and it's gonna put all the parts of the recipe in the right little slots. So let's see what happens here. We'll mail most the... requested chicken. Text field. Okay, so there's the top. Photos, zero photos button. Okay, if there had been pictures, I've never had it load pictures into the into the app here. Rating. Okay, the rating, you can rate the recipe. If I haven't made it, I don't rate it. Star rating, zero stars, adjustable. Okay, so we can uh, adjust that later. Info, cook, four hours, 10 minutes, servings, yield, six servings, source, heartlandcooking.com button. Okay, so the really cool thing is it gives you the source of the recipe, so you know it's heartlandcooking.com. Categories, uncategorized button. Okay, the great thing about this categories button is that when you first open the app and you start working with it, you can create your own categories. So if I were to double tap on this categories button, I would be able to choose chicken as one of the categories. You can choose multiple categories. Um, suppose this was a soup recipe and it was also vegetarian, let's say, um, you know, or whatnot. You could choose more than one category. Description, heading. Okay, this doesn't usually have anything in it. Description, text field. You could uh, describe it, you know, in whatever way you'd like, just to remind yourself. Ingredients, heading. Okay, and here's the heading for the ingredients. Ingredients, one slash two cup low sodium soy sauce, one slash three cup honey, one slash three cup hoisin sauce, two tablespoons rice vinegar, one teaspoon sesame oil, two teaspoons fresh ginger, minced, five cloves garlic, minced, one small onion, finely diced, one slash four teaspoon red chili flakes, four large... And so forth. I'm going to be making this one and can just tell you, <laughs> any Asian recipe is just fine with me. So it does read all the ingredients in one fell swoop. So let's see if we can read them line by line or some other increment. Edit. Miss that word. Text select characters. Words. Lines. Okay, so we have it. Lines. One slash two cup low sodium soy sauce. That's right. So we're going to be able to do that. So that's really great because no one can deal with all that in one fell swoop. So we can adjust the rotor to lines and then just swipe down. One slash three cup honey. One slash three cup poison sauce. Which is great. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to be saving this one. Okay, so then uh, once I swipe out of the ingredients. Directions. Heading. I have the directions and it will read those. Directions. In a large bowl, add the soy sauce, the honey, the hoisin sauce, the rice vinegar, the sesame oil, the fresh ginger, the garlic. And so forth. So I stop the speech. Okay, so in order to save this, I would go back and categorize it because I want to make sure that I know it's a chicken recipe. And then... I would need to hit the back button because uh, then I return to this screen right here where it would have its category and then I would hit the save button. If I save it right now, which I can do. Save button. In the top right corner. It is Page settings button. saved. And I am still though on the website. And so what it did was it took me into Paprika from the website. And when I save it, I am still on the website. So I would need to go back to the Paprika. App switcher. Safari. Active. Paprika. Active. Go back here. Paprika 3, main menu, settings. Okay, so now I am back to where I was settings. before. Browser. And Groceries. Go Re selected. Back recipes. Up to recipes. Main menu. Addie's favorite peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. Okay, and they're in alphabetical order. I think you can sort them differently as well. But those are really fantastic peanut butter chocolate chip cookies, by the way. And I think I probably have about 300 recipes saved in here. And it's you know, it'll take me a, a lifetime to really make them. But this is my, like I said, very favorite app because the websites are so annoying. They're just really uh, a pain. And if you can strip the recipe out and it does have the source, so everything's on the up and up, then you can return to that website if you'd like in a browser and check out their other recipes. But this is just really awesome. You can even share a recipe with a friend from this uh, app 
and they don't have to have the paprika app. It would just share the recipe with them. I believe it sends them a link. And uh, so, yeah, this is just great. So I hope you've enjoyed the demo of the Paprika 3 recipe manager available on Apple and Android and Mac. Happy cooking. Now it's time for Marty to show us how to quickly add events to your calendar from Spotlight. Quick tip. I'm going to show you how to add events to your calendar on an iPhone using voiceover. First, from the home screen, you're going to do a three-finger swipe down. Then you're going to find a search box at the top. In that box, you can dictate or type out either one lunch at 12 p.m. with Michael. Then you hit go on the keyboard and it will bring up the calendar details menu. In there, you can add all of the options such as setting an alert or changing the calendar if you want it to be on a different calendar, all the things. Then you hit done on the top right corner and it's on your calendar. It's just that easy. So one more time, you do a three finger swipe down from the home screen. You go to the search box at the top, type in an event such as lunch with Michael at 12 p.m. You can even do the date, lunch with Michael on Saturday at 12 p.m. Or anything else that you want to add to your calendar, you can put there. Once you hit go on the keyboard, then you get the details menu of the calendar. You pick all of your details there, such as alert, all of those things, changing the calendar. You can set a one-time event only or repeating event, all that kind of stuff. And then you hit done on the top right corner or add, whichever can be different depending on the operating system that you're using or the version of calendar. And there you go. A super easy way to add events to your calendar. Enjoy. And now it's my turn to talk with you about the Shox Open Fit Earbuds. If you're familiar with Shox, also known as Aftershocks, then you may be familiar with the concept of open ear headphones. Unlike most of the Shox headphones, these don't sit in front of your ears. They actually sit on your ear canal. So let me describe them to you. When you get your Shox Open Fit earbuds, you receive a case with a USB-C charger on the back. Flip the case open, it kind of flips up, and you'll find two buds, one on the left and one on the right. These come with a rectangle piece that sits on your ear canal and the hooks hang over your ears. What I really like about the Shox Open Fit earbuds is that they provide a lot of louder volume and low end volume when you need it. The Shox Open Fit earbuds have two tactile dots on them, one on the left, one on the right. Simply tap this tactile dot to perform an action, double tap or triple tap them. You can expect to receive about seven hours per charge, and you can recharge the buds up to four times using the charging case. If you're open for a, uh, see what I did there, new experience when it comes to open ear headphones, check out the Shox Open Fit, available at AT Guys and Amazon and Shox and your other favorite audio places. Well, thanks everyone for being here at Digital Bytes and checking it out. And uh, we look forward to coming back with lots of good content. And uh, with that, we will see you next time. Unmute production. For more, check out. <laughs> <laughs>